Good evening, and welcome to the War Room. Tonight's episode, I want to do a combination review and playthrough of Hexasim's Last Eagles game, Quattro Bra, 1815. And pardon me for my pronunciation of any of the words uh, in French, as it's not my uh, best language. So I apologize to any of the French speakers listening. So tonight I wanted to try and start with the review and look at some of the components. I have the game all set up and ready to go. I have the turn record chart laid out with the uh, variable entry uh, markers on there and I also have the reinforcement cards, the order cards, and a cheat sheet of my own for the sequence of play laid out under the plexiglass next to the map. I have the French set up in their uh, setup hexes and uh, the <clears throat> Prince of Orange and uh, his units set up on their entry hexes. Uh, Perpanchere is here in the front with his division and uh, the Prince is back here at the crossroads with one uh, artillery, cav artillery unit. Uh, I also have laid out over here all of the uh, reinforcements on the Anglo-Allied side and the Anglo-Allied order card as well as a card I created uh, for the leaders because I hate having the uh, leader counters covered on the board and trying to keep track of everything on the board so created this cheat sheet where it shows the leader what activation phase he's on what the <clears throat> status is of the leader killed wounded captured and what the status of his formation is so I'll keep track of all that over there so without uh, further <clears throat> ado, we get right into focusing on the opening phase of the game here with the French and the Dutch. Now the uh, first thing to do would be to roll for the first player determination phase and I'm using a red dice for the Anglo-Allied and a blue for the French. So the blue uh, gets a minus three for the first turn under the according to the scenario book we're playing the historical scenario and we get a six and a six so that means for the first activation the Anglo-Allies will get to go first so we will see if the Prince of Orange can activate as our first activation. And it looks like he can. So he will activate and move the Dutch uh, horse artillery unit forward <coughs> to support the rest of the unit. So if he stays on the road, he can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He gets an extra two for staying on the road the entire time. And then orange will move up as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, two, right about there, I think. And then that will be his activation. So we'll mark him with his first activation over here on my little chart and we'll go to the French. So for the French, Ryle will try and activate for the first phase. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot. Uh, so there's no other... There's the activation and then rally if you want to as an order. Either the commander or the leader can order his whole unit to rally. Then there's offensive fire, 
movement, melee, cav retreat, opportunity fire, cav counter charge, defensive fire, melee resolved, cavalry pursuit, and end of turn check. So now we have to roll for the end of turn check because that's the first activation. So we'll roll and we get it looks like a five. So looking in the scenario book the first turn of the historical scenario uh, let me see end of turn scenario one and two would be a ten on the first uh, first activation phase or the first half of the phase so he rolled a five so we're good to go for the French so Ryle will roll to see if he can activate his entire core and he can so the French will start to advance uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we'll go one more into there. Five. We've got to bring up the rest of the army before we get too carried away about attacking. Oh, and, and Orange has been giving given a defend order, and Ryle has been given an advance order to the uh, little village just short of Quatre Bras because he can only give an order to a hex within 15 hexes of where he was initially, so that would put him at... Uh, the Femme de la Bergère. Again, pardon my pronunciation. Now these guys can go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, because that's up a gentle slope, so it doesn't affect movement. And then one, two, three, four. Look where the artillery's got to stay back here, one, because he can only go three. Now, these guys moving down the road can go one, two, three, four, five and stay together, or I could separate them and go quite a bit more. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, go to here. Well, let's see again, that puts them one, two, three, four, five there. And this stack, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, because he's not on the road the entire turn. One, two, three, four, same for him. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And one, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, five, six, seven. Now, keep him with the rest of the light units. And so that would be, again, the movement, um, activation, no offensive fire, movement, melee, no melee, cav, retreat, opportunity fire, defensive fire, melee resolve, cavalry pursuit, end of turn check, Next. and a 10. Ah. And he rolled. 10, which is what the chart says for this scenario on the first attempt and I just have to check if it's greater than or equal to I believe it's greater than so I'm going to check real quick 
end of turn. is less than or equal to the current end of turn level the turn continues so he passed that because it was equal to so now the activation goes back to the Anglo Allies and I can now attempt to either Activate and move Perpon Share or bring in one of my reinforcements. And I think I will attempt to bring in one of my reinforcements. And I will attempt to bring in the other Netherland or Dutch troops. So uh, that would be the sixth. Part of the sixth to be in. And or the third division, excuse me. So I will attempt to bring them in on a roll of eight. Oh, so they failed activation, so they are not activated. So I have to try another unit, or pass. And in this case, I think I will try and bring in another unit. Oh, I'll try and bring in the 5th Division under Picton, which is an, another attempted an eight and so Picton can enter and Picton comes on in hidden fashion so his division enters from the Brussels Road hex during the first activation of the formation of the first turn. Now I'm allowed to look and see and of course both of them are uh, blanks, which means he doesn't actually come on, but of course the French wouldn't know this, so I can move them under orders, and I get in a free order, so they will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, excuse me, he's got to go at the slowest, which is three, so it's one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, and that will be Picton's as far as they will, much as they will go, as far as anybody will see them, and as long as they continue to move in the general direction, never getting further away than where their actual orders uh, are sending them, they should be all set. Now at this point, I would, I assume, redo and put a hidden marker on here for Picton which would uh, have to be within 15 hexes of the closest unit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I can put it here at the uh, crossroads, just or at the uh, little village, Farm de la Bourgier, just beyond Quatre Bras, and still be within 15. So that would be his activation, and then roll to see if the turn is ending. It's not. So we go to the French. Oh, I forgot to mark Ryle and Picton's first activation. So they would get marked over here on the card. Uh, Ryle's first activation, and now Picton's first activation. So now I'll see if we can activate Ney, because we have to skip Ryle. We can't activate him twice in a row. And so Ney activates, and he also activates the guard cav with him. And Ney can perform a function 
but the guard cav can also he can perform one of his three leadership functions. Nay can carry along with the guard cav who have to follow uh, their advance order which is placed on the uh, table there somewhere as well. So they will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and this guy right behind him. So we'll mark Nay now as having made one activation. And Ney is not going to use any of his special ability because he doesn't have to. We'll roll for the end of the turn. <coughs> and it doesn't end. So we go back to the Anglo-Allied. I could activate Perponcher or Orange because they've both taken a turn off, but there's no real need to. So I'll try and bring on another reinforcement, which I think I'll try and bring... Brunswick on for this turn, and Brunswick is a nine leader, so see if he activates, and he does. So we will bring Brunswick's marker on, uh, which is over here. And they look, and, and again, neither one of them is Brunswick, but uh, he also enters from the Brussels Road, so he will go one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and stop there and there. So we'll mark him as activated for his first activation. Oh yes, Brunswick, there he is over here. And we'll see if the turn ends. Nope. So we'll go back to the French. The French roll to activate Ryle. And he does not, so we'll pass. So we'll see if we can bring on a French reinforcement. Which is the 3rd Cavalry Corps under Kellerman. So he comes on. So Kellerman, who can't use uh, hidden movement, comes on Charlotte Road. Charlotte Charlotte Road, which is here, so he will come on, and where is Kellerman, because I don't believe he can come on uh, using, hidden movement, oh no, I take it back, he can, oh, I'm sorry, and uh, please feel free to jump in and correct me where you see any mistakes. I'm making so we'll leave them there and we'll put the hidden counters here and they can go six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. And we can look and see, and yep, yeah, that is Kellerman. So he's actually, troops are actually on the board. So now we roll to see if the turn ends early or it begins the beginning of the end. Ah, and whoops, right into the middle and it doesn't. Not neighing everyone for a loop. So the turn doesn't end, so now back over to the Anglo Allies. Uh, we will try and bring in uh, oh yeah, we got to give Brunswick an order. We'll give him an order too, which would be uh, we'll send Brunswick 
over here. And now let's see, the only one left would be to bring in uh, the rest of the Dutch under Merlin, who is a nine. So let's see if we can activate him. And he activates. So he will come on the Nivelle Road, which would be here. So we'll give him the order. And I think we'll send him out. send him out that way to the flank and of course they won't know that and we'll take the Nouvelle who can move six and we'll look and see and no we're batting a thousand none of them have all been Fake counters, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, headed down the road that away. Of course, the French wouldn't know that. Oh, and then uh, again, we get an activation uh, marker. Oh yeah, it's Perpon Share, not Wellington. It's been activated once in Maryland. Uh, Picton, Brunswick, yeah. Those are the four activations so far. We'll roll to see if turn ends. No, nope, not yet. So the French go. And so far the French have activated... Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mark Kellerman. So Kellerman has got an activation. He was the last one to activate, so I can activate Ryle or Nay. Let's activate Ryle. And he does. So now we're going to get into a little nitty-gritty here. I think I'm going to attack. So they're going to attack. He's going to go one two, three, and stay back a little bit. These guys will go one, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, Ryle's going to stay behind. These guys are going to go one, two, three. One, two, three. I think I will have them. Wait a minute. Same for them. These guys will go one, two, three, four. Ryle's actually there. I think I will send these guys around the flank. So these guys will go one, two, three, four. Five, six. Seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ryle is just going to move up to there. He's going to go one, two, Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're always supposed to put artillery on top. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five. So now, okay, that was there was no offensive fire. That was movement. So now melee decoration, uh, declaration. So we are going.
going to melee here and here and here and here. Whoop. And here, so pretty much straight ahead. And the only decision is do I want to throw the cav in to the melee? And I don't think so. I think I want to save them for flanking. So let's readjust here and zoom in a little bit so we can see the action a little better. And we'll start from left to right. And the first, the first thing we need to do is the defensive fire. And also, any cav being attacked by just plain infantry can retreat. There's none of that. The opportunity fire. Now, anybody that isn't being directly meleeed can shoot at one of the attackers and gets a bonus because if he's not engaged, if he's engaged in a the melee, then it'll be defensive fire in a minute. And what happens is, in this case, this unit here can fire at this melee unit and he will get a bonus uh, because it's opportunity fire of minus one on the die roll. So now one of the things that's a little different about this game is the strengths of the units firing in fire combat non-artillery don't uh, make much difference how many strength points there are as long as it's over four. So the modifiers in this case for the opportunity fire, there's no terrain effects because it's in the open. So the, it's a minus one for being opportunity fire. Um, he is light infantry firing, so he gets another minus one. Uh, it's not artillery fire, and so it's a straight minus two on the die roll. So we get a four, which is pretty good on this on that roll. Oh, still not quite on camera. There we go. So we get a four with a minus two becomes a final die roll of two. Um, if the die roll had been two with an unmodified straight two, there was a possible leader loss. But there, if there was one involved, but there is no leader involved. So on the fire table, let's see if I can we get this in here. Um, it, it becomes a two, so it's QFT two and one step loss. So that's pretty good for a defensive fire. That was a pretty good roll. So this unit, is, uh, the lead unit on top, is going to take a step loss, and the stack has to do a quality check with a plus two and oh an unmodified 12. So in uh, defensive fire uh, he failed and he routes and so the stack routes three hexes back one two three and is routed now. That was pretty good. That's the best result I've seen yet. Uh, I've only played a couple of turns previously in, in, the, uh, in the, the recommended starter scenario and usually not much happens with defensive fire. So he's routed. Wow. Now the next unit can fire, so that means he could fire opportunity fire at him. 
<clears throat> now this becomes opportunity fire, I believe, because he is not being engaged in melee anymore, so he can shoot at him with straight, uh, wow, a three. So fire table with three is a QFT of one, and he loses a step. Wow, these guys are hot. So he's going to lose a step. And now he's got to take a quality check with a plus one. Five, so he passes, which because he's a seven. And so the melee will go on, provided uh, nothing else happens. Now, that takes care of the opportunity fire. Now the next fire is defensive fire, which gets no um, minus modifier. So in this case, it's just a straight up roll defensive fire. And he gets a 5, and a 5 is a quality check. So he just has to make morale, which he does with a 4. So that one passes. Now this is artillery, and this is a little bit different on the fire table, but he's only a 4 strength artillery. So there are no special modifiers. Um, he's adjacent, so that's a minus 1. Uh, for each 10 strength points of artillery firing, you get a minus one, but he's only a four. Um, so it's minus one. Six becomes a five. Five on the artillery fire is a QFT and one step loss. Wow. So the lead unit takes a step loss, and they have to do a regular seven quality check and he doesn't pass and he doesn't pass by a two because he's only a seven so he's going to route as well so he goes back one two three to here we'll mark him with a rope marker wow it's the best defensive fire I've ever seen and which saved that artillery, because that artillery would have gotten overrun for sure. So, one more. He's not a light. It's uh, defensive fire, not opportunity fire, so there's no modifiers. So a 9 on a fire table is nothing. That's even more like what happens. So, that takes care of opportunity fire. And... defensive fire. So now the melee is resolved. So we flip over to the melee table, which is on the back side of the fire table, and we have very simple, similar simple chart, but there's an attacker and a defender result, depending upon what we roll. So we figure out, and with this you figure out the odds. So this is going to be 21 to 9, but because he's in a building, uh, the terrain limits the attack to only 21, or 20, excuse me. So it's 20 to 9, which is a 2 to 1, which gives us a minus 2 on the die roll. The defender is in a major building, so uh, there's a plus 2 to the melee and so the plus two and the minus two cancel out they are both quality seven uh, units so there's no modifier there so it looks like it's a straight up die roll terrain effects defender quality the ratio Nobody's routed, nobody's encircled, nobody's demoralized. It's not a mixed formation, it's not CAV involved. Nobody's fatigued, not just defending stack. Ah, Anglo-Allied combat units apply a plus one DRM to their melee attacks with a lead infantry unit, but uh, they're the defender here, so it's looks like a straight up 
a straight die roll and the results are an 8 so the attacker does a quality check and the defender no result so the attacker is a 7 so he passes So that resolves that one. Now, I've forgotten, did we, yeah. Uh, so this one, yeah. So we resolve this one now. This one, because of the loss, is a 15 to 9. So that's a 3 to 2. So he gets a minus 1 for that. They're both, he's a 7, but as a res yep, they're both 7s, so there's nothing there. So there's no other, there's just a minus one on the die roll. So seven becomes a six, so it's a quality check for the Dutch unit. Who rolls an eight, which means he fails, but it only fails greater than one, so he just retreats one. And that melee ends, and I can advance in after combat, so he will advance in. Now these guys are going to be 20 to 9, and there's no modifier other than it's 2 to 1, which gets them a minus 2. No terrain effects, the, the uh, defender attacker quality is the same. So minus two, ooh, a natural two, which means we get a roll in a minute um, to see if we captured their flag. So they got to do a quality check, and they are reduced. All units in one stack lose one step. Now there's only one unit there, but he's reduced, and he's got to do a morale check with a 2, 8, 9, 10, so he fails, so he's going to route. So he's going to go back 1, 2, 3, and be marked as route, routed. And now we have to check, mark him as routed, and we'll check and see if he captured the flag. And these guys can advance in, and there was no harmful effects to them because it was such a low roll so to see if we captured the flag um, there's no leader involved so I don't believe we can capture him but uh, six and looking on the table would have been the leader wounded if there was one but <coughs> uh, neither one neither one occurred so that is the end of the melee and uh, that activation. And so that is Ryle's second activation. So I will mark him over here as having activated for a second time. And we'll roll to see if the turn is ending. And it is not, which means We'll go back to being the Dutch turn, or the Anglo Allies, when we come back. Because I'm going to try and keep these uh, fairly short, so I thought that would be a good start to the, to the game and a little bit of the review. And I just mentioned some of the things I like about the game. I like the system. It's gotten me into playing Napoleonics again. Uh, I like the counters. I have a like-dislike on the counters. I like the fact that they come pre-rounded, but uh, I don't like, if I can get it to focus, I don't like the fact that it leaves a little tab on, whoop, on the middle e either side that you can sort of trim off with the X-Acto knife, but not really. So unlike when you do it yourself, um, it leaves you with a nice rounded smooth counter all the way around but it does save you all of the aggravation and the hassle of having to do it yourself so that is kind of a nice feature it's also nice I've seen some counters where they do it on all four of the uh, edges and then you end up with four burrs instead of two so with this you only get two burrs and 
they are pretty minimal once you, if you carefully trim them out of the uh, sheet with the X-Acto knife. So that's some of the dislikes and uh, likes I have. I uh, like the game overall. Um, I like the, uh, the uh, cover of the uh, game. I like the box art, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And uh, overall, it's um, a lot of fun to play so far. So I'm still learning as I go, and please don't hesitate to comment and put corrections below or any questions you have and point, let me know anything I did wrong. Thanks very much for watching, and uh, again, this uh, has been the playthrough of uh, Hexasim's Last Eagles Quattro Bra 1815 uh, that I found on GMT's website and uh, really like the game so far. So, uh, good night from the war room, and remember, no fighting in the war room. Take care.